A new way to travel. Have you ever flown in an airplane? These days, we easily fly over oceans to visit distant places. We can fly from New York to Paris, crossing a huge ocean in less than eight hours. We can do this while eating good food, watching the latest movies, and sleeping in chairs that fold out into comfortable beds when we get tired. It wasn't always that way. Only 100 years ago, planes were much smaller and slower. They couldn't fly as high. Long flights across the ocean had never been done before and were both dangerous and impossible. But in 1919, all of that was about to change. The Contest Gentlemen, as a stimulus to the courageous aviators, I desire to offer, through the auspices and regulations of the Aero Club of America, a prize of $25,000 to the first aviator of any Allied country crossing the Atlantic in one flight, from Paris to New York or New York to Paris, all other details in your care. Yours very sincerely, Raymond o r t e a g u e This simple letter started one of the most talked about races of the past 100 years. It also made Charles Lindbergh one of the most famous heroes of his time. The author of the letter, Raymond o r t e a g u e owned two hotels in New York. o r t e a g u e was originally from France, and many of his hotel guests were French pilots. He wanted to strengthen the relationship between the United States and France. He offered $25,000, which would be worth about $350,000 today, to the person who could make the first nonstop flight between the two countries. This led to a few different attempts, many of which ended in disaster. A Failed Attempt In one famous attempt, the French flying ace Rene f o n c Tried to make the flight in a very large three engine airplane. The plane was too heavy and it crashed and burned on takeoff. Two of his team died in the fire. An Eager Pilot Charles Lindbergh was only a teenager at the time o r t e a g u e announced his contest. He worked very hard to get into the race. At the age of 20, Lindbergh quit university. He moved to Nebraska and started working for the Nebraska Aircraft Corporation. He learned how to fix planes and got to fly with company pilots from time to time. At the age of 21, Lindbergh was able to save $500 and buy a used plane. He bought the plane without ever having flown one by himself. He practiced for a week. And then flew off to begin his barnstorming career. Becoming a skilled pilot. Lindbergh spent much of the next year flying almost every single day as a barnstormer. Barnstormers entertain crowds of people with daring tricks in their planes. Only a year later, he joined the United States Air Service to do a year of military flight training. It was difficult. But he graduated at the top of his class. By the age of 24, Lindbergh was working for the U.S. Postal Service delivering airmail. He quickly became known as a skilled and careful pilot. At the age of 25, Lindbergh was ready to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. The Spirit of St. Louis Charles Lindbergh raised enough money to build a special plane that could fly across the ocean. The airplane he had built is probably the most famous plane in the history of flying. It was named the Spirit of St. Louis. The plane got its name in honor of the people of St. Louis, Missouri, who supported and believed in Lindbergh, giving him extra money to buy the plane. Most of the other pilots who tried to fly across the Atlantic built big, heavy planes with three or four engines. However, Lindbergh felt that a small, single engine plane would give him a much better chance to make the trip. In order to save weight, he cut out many important items, such as a radio, a parachute, the pilot's seat. Instead, he used a light kitchen chair, lights, and even a front window. 
most of the weight of the plane came from the gas tanks and fuel. The Spirit of St. Louis is a wonderful plane. It's like a living creature gliding along smoothly, happily, as though a successful flight means as much to it as to me, as though we shared our experiences together, each feeling beauty, life, and death as keenly, each dependent on the other's loyalty. We have made this flight across the ocean, not I or it. Charles Lindbergh, 1927 Lindbergh loved his plane almost as if it were a person. He often spoke of himself and his plane as we, which became the title of a famous book he wrote about the flight. The Flight Six well-known pilots had already lost their lives trying to win the Ortigue Prize. This included two Frenchmen who left Paris for New York only a few days before Lindbergh's attempt. The men were lost at sea and never found again. These dangers did not discourage the young Charles Lindbergh from trying anyway. Although he was younger and less famous than the other pilots, Lindbergh was brave and wanted to try. In his book, The Spirit of St. Louis, he asked readers, Why shouldn't I fly from New York to Paris? I have more than four years of aviation behind me and close to 2,000 hours in the air. I've barnstormed over half of the 48 states. Why am I not qualified for such a flight? Preparing to Fly The night before Lindbergh's historic flight, his crew was very busy. In those days, the gas used for cars and airplanes contained a lot of dirt and sand, which often caused engines to stop or fail. So for many hours before the Spirit of St. Louis took off, the crew cleaned the fuel as many times as they could to make sure that there were no problems. Takeoff and Landing On May 20, 1927, at 7.52 in the morning, Lindbergh aimed his plane down the runway. The Spirit of St. Louis was carrying an extra 1,200 kilograms of fuel and the runway was very wet from the rain. The spirit of St. Louis gained speed and height very slowly. Lindbergh worried he would crash. But at the very last minute, the plane rose above the telephone lines at the end of the runway, missing them by about six meters. Over the next 33 and a half hours, Lindbergh faced many difficulties, sometimes having to fly high over storm clouds at 3,000 meters, he also had to fly very low at just three meters above the sea. He had to fight ice on the wings and a lack of sleep. Plus, he only had the stars to guide him. After flying nearly 5,800 kilometers, Lindbergh landed the following night at 1022 at Le Burguet Field near Paris. The Celebration More than 150,000 cheering people had gathered to meet Lindbergh, causing the largest single traffic jam in Paris's history. The people ran across the field, pulled Lindbergh out of his plane, and carried him above their heads for more than 30 minutes. The young man's heroic flight had clearly inspired people's imaginations. Back in New York Back in New York City, he was given a huge parade to honor his amazing accomplishment. The United States government made a Lindbergh Air mail stamp to celebrate. Charles Lindbergh dared to fly. He dared to fly where no one had ever flown before and made history. He was one of the world's greatest pilots. <laughs>